in the heavyweight division. And to talk about it, let's look at the Taylor tape, Steve. Well, the key number there, Solis's weight, an inexcusable career high of 271. <laughs> That's nine pounds more than the last fight. Barrett, 218 and a half. Despite taking this fight on short notice, he wasn't training. That's a good number for Monty Barrett. So two heavyweights getting ready to battle. Only about three or four days notice. He mentioned to me and told us that he had an inkling the fight might well happen uh, a couple of weeks before, and he was already in training. So he was, in fact, in better the shape. Meetings, I mean, we, did he make any changes? He says, no, I didn't have no time to make any changes. So, uh, we, you know, I figure off his amateur experience, he fought so many different styles, he should be able to adjust if he's going to be a heavyweight contender down the line. Okay, good luck. So Solis and Barrett, two heavyweights in very different positions in their career. The 30-year-old Barrett has been kind of an enigma in the heavyweight division. Winning fights he should lose, and losing fights he should win. <laughs> and Solis trying to prove to everybody that he's the man that can breathe a little extra life in the heavyweight division and perhaps challenge one of the Klitschko's. So they're scheduled for 10 rounds. It's a great opportunity for Monty Barrett, being that he's coming off an 11 month layoff. And if he can pull off the upset here, you know, he's a factor again and he'll get another big fight in the heavyweight division. It is amazing. He's 38 years old. You are never out of contention in the heavyweight division. One win, as you point out, Steve, can vault you back. A right hand by Solis. He's knocked out 10 of his 14 opponents. Mentioned the 11 month layoff for Barrett. Oddly enough, he has an 11 month layoff and came in here lighter than his last fight when he was 226. So Lise, who's been active, came in heavier. Barrett using all of this ring and so Lise stalking him, albeit stalking him in a kind of a slow fashion. No, Ma Monty saw the number uh, that. So at least came in at weight wise, and I think he'd like to extend this fight as long as he can. <laughs> I was about to say that, yeah, this 271 pound frame is just all over Monte <laughs> and the ropes. So, yeah, he needs to move around and box him a little bit, use his jab, use his lateral movement, give him angles. Right hand to the body by Solis as Barrett blasts away to the body himself. Right hand by Solis. It actually surprises me that Solis is just a single punch and he's usually, you know, an explosive, uh, quick handed type of guy. And, you know, he fights kind of in spurts, but it's fine different here. Um, just single, one, one, one punch. He's loading up with the right yes. hand, trying to, to land that against Monty Barrett. A minute left to go, under a minute left to go here in round one of this 10 rounder. Solis was a champion amateur for Cuba, defected when he and um, Uriarcus Gamboa and another Cuban teammate were in Venezuela. It was a defection that was dangerous, difficult, but they made it work. Actually, Solis was a gold medalist too in the 2004 Olympics. Beat a lot of, like you said earlier, beat a lot of good guys in amateurs. Also beat uh, Sultan Ibraganov, another guy that he. And David Hay as well. Uh -huh. Well, Monty's jabbing a lot, but he's not getting off with any power shots. Hey! That gave Solis the round up by itself. Final seconds here of round number one. Take time! We'll uh, take a visit into Solis's corner. Raul will pick up himself working with Pavel Volek in the corner of Monty Barrett and the cut man there, Jimmy Glenn, who is to boxing aficionados, a legendary figure, um, great boxing figure, who has a terrific bar here in New York yes. that is very, very well known to all who come to this city. Round number two of this 10-rounder. Adlanir Solis in the white trunks, a 29-year-old from Cuba, now living in Miami, who right. spent some time in Germany when he was originally uh, signed to a professional contract, and now he is in Miami. And Monty Barrett, the 38-year-old from Queens, New York, 
who is in there off an 11 month layoff. Big hook sends Monty Two, Barrett down. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have a lot of time left in this round. Two minutes. Can Monty Barrett survive? Solis is swinging for the fences. Barrett needs to hold on. He needs to hug him, hold on to him. Break, break, break. Let him go. Go let him go. Now hold him. The left hook changed everything in this fight, and Monty Barrett is just trying to buy time. Yeah, he's hurt. He's hurt. He's all over the place. He's. No, no, no. A slip. Get up. That one is called a slip or a push. Referee Wayne Kelly calling it so. Right hand to the body by Solis. Another clubbing right hand. And Barrett in the corner, a dangerous place to be. And Solis doing a great job of not letting Barrett hold him. That's it. Fight's right, over. The fight has been stopped by Wayne Kelly as Monty Barrett went down for a second time here in this round. Fifty four seconds of round number two. The winner by TKO victory. His record now 15 fights, 15 victories, 11 KOs. Still undefeated. Or Lanier, the Samba Solis. This crowd here at the Wamu Theater at Madison Square Garden who. Can you ask Or Lanier? He was in control from the very start of the first round. Yesterday we were talking about what an intelligent fighter he is. Did he see something that lent, that told him a left hook would work like that? Estabas en control desde que empezó la pelea y anoche o ayer estábamos en entrevista y estaban hablando de una de las virtudes tuyas es que tan inteligente tú eres en el ring. ¿Tú notaste algo desde el principio de la pelea que fue una debilidad que pudiste explotar? Bueno, hoy en la tarde yo vi, pude ver un pedazo de su pelea con David Hay. Lo que vi fueron cuestión de 40 segundos que él tiraba a la derecha, una derecha que parece muy alta y entonces la recogía por abajo. Y sobre eso fue que trabajé el swing, y ahí fue llegó el primer swing que le tiré, el primero le dio. Literally, I saw a 40-second clip of one of his fights, I think it was with David Hay, where I noticed that he would leave the right hand out too far, and then he would drop it. And I knew I, if I worked my left hook, I'd catch him. I was critical a little bit about the weight that he came in at, 271, a career high. Did it affect him at all? Did he feel any different fighting at this weight? Yo, como tantos en la prensa, te criticó un poquito por el sobrepeso que nosotros creemos que está. Eh, ¿Tú crees que el peso te afectó en algo, en algo en la pelea? Bueno, a mí el peso no afectó en ningún momento, como lo vieron. Trabajé todo el asalto buscando a mi contrario. En ningún momento me vieron ahogado, sofocado. Eh, en este momento yo, estoy, yo no estoy trabajando en cuestión de peso ni en cuestión de, de mi técnica para estas peleas, sino para peleas futuras y discutir el campeonato mundial. It, was, it didn't affect me at all, the weight. You know, like I said before in my interview, what I'm really working on is my conditioning, my strength, and that's what I might main focus on so I can keep building on for the future, and that's what I did tonight. Last question. With this knockout, where is he at in, in the big picture? Eh, la última pregunta. Después de este knockout, ¿dónde tú estás en, en el escenario este de los pesos completos? Bueno, eso te, tengo que preguntarle a mi, a mi promotor. <laughs> I'm at your promoter. I think he's the best heavyweight, and we want to see him with Klitschko. That is what I want. Okay, Oleana Solis stays undefeated in spectacular fashion.